Hello and welcome to CS230. It's the inter-semester break and I've had some queries from, from lots of you about the assignment, assignment 3. And it's due at the end of the week. And this one really was all about manipulating tables. So um, I decided I'd put together a little small demo to show you how I would go about doing this kind of problem solving. And there's lots and lots of approaches, lots and lots of ways you know, you can create some HTML, you can update that HTML, then you can manipulate the DOM and then try to extract all the information from the DOM and and save it and generate objects and so forth. So lots of ways to do it. My approach is, is slightly different. So, and, and I'm not going to give you the full solution to this here in this particular um, um, little lesson, really, but I want to get to show you how you might produce this kind of effect. And I'm going to use a data model, which is a Java script object. Really, you can consider it to be a kind of JSON object, really. And, and then I'm going to automatically generate the table, the HTML table, from that object. So here's, um, here's an example of how it works for me currently. Let me see if I can find it here. Okay, so you can see I just have a, a piece of code and I have a button that says create a table from a JavaScript object and then I want to show the JavaScript object so we can see this. Now, the table doesn't exist um, currently. Um, it doesn't exist, it's not in here, uh, anywhere in the program. It, I have a little function, and I'll show, to you, show that to you in a few minutes, that allows me to be able to create this. So I click this button and I have a table. Click it again, I get a new table, and another table, and another table. It just generates tables. So it does a lot of the things that you want to be able to do. It has the styling here, it has the alternating colors, it generates a random name, and um, here it generates a random number, and um, it has the five initial five columns, each with a random data. Now I know some of those would have dashes, um, but I haven't, I haven't done that. I mean, I'm not going to give you a full solution, as I said. And here I calculate an average of those as I've generated them. Uh, this is a proper table, but actually, it didn't exist anywhere as a HTML in advance of me clicking this button up here. I click the button and it just generates a data model and then it generates a HTML table from that data model. And you can see the state, the current state of the data model by just looking at this click button here, Joe, the JavaScript object. And here we have the object that's been converted to JSON with a string by function. Okay, and this data should correspond pretty much to and um, everything that's in this table. So here's the, the object as it is in memory converted to um, to JSON. Um, and this is the view, if you like, the representation of that when I run my code. So there's, the reason I do it this particular way is because um, uh, I, re well, what I like about it, I guess, is that <laughs> if I can get this string of data from the model, and I mean, it will just show it again and it updates this. And if I can get this, then I can, convert it to um, a string, as I've said already, and then I can add it to a cookie and save it, and then I can copy it back from that co cookie again. So the load and save just means taking this data, and um, putting it in the cookie, taking it back from the cookie, and then using this, this data object to generate the table. So it's a very quick and easy way. It handles, it handles the structure, it handles everything else. Now there's a bit of dynamism around this table here. All it does is builds all this, um, this table. I'm not showing you how to add in extra rows or columns or anything. That's very straightforward to do as well, I guess. You know. So let's have a look at the code to do all of this. It's um, reasonably short, okay, I guess. So there's all the code, <laughs> pretty much to do the code. So, so there's a few extra bits, of course. So I have styles. So I have set up all my styles here um, and the styles. Um, for everything are handled here, okay? And um, all my table styles and a little bit of extra styling there just for, for, for this as well. Then I wanted to generate some names, all of these. So you'll know these names, they're all different names and they're a mixture of um, boys and girls names. So what I did is I actually have a name generator and this is huge, look at the length of the names. Really, I got the, the most popular the most popular boys' names and the most popular girls' names according to the Central Statistics Office and I created a, a variable containing all that, all of those names and then I got the 100 most popular Irish surnames as well and <laughs> um, I got those from S. Wilson and then I automatically, I wrote a little piece of code that automatically generates um, a list of 
so I can get a random name. Okay, so so it generates a random name for me, sort of time. So I'm lazy. I don't want to think about making up names. So I just wrote a little function that does this. It doesn't take long. And um, so it got me my names. And if I go back to my demo program, I got a random number, and I generated a random grade. Okay, so all of those three little methods are the ones that gives me give me the data that I need to be able to put into the various cells. Okay, so this is a this first this is the first column. That's a random name. This is a random number, or ID number, and these are random numbers that will be used for purposes. And then this needs to be an average of these. Okay, so that's how we go about this. So, okay, so um, let's go from the beginning again. So when I create my, my original uh, HTML page, I just have a button, a space in here to hold my table, another button, and some space afterwards to hold my um, JSON. And you can see that here there's a div here, a div containing a button, sorry, a div containing a, a button, a div containing where I'm going to show the table data, another button, and where I'm going to show the table object. So that's that part done. That's easy as well. So the styles are loaded externally, okay, in a style sheet, okay, so that's okay. And the get name functionality that I showed you in this other little file, JavaScript file here, that's loaded in as well. Okay, so you don't have to worry about those. You can write your own little function to just generate a random name if you wanted, or a random number or something. I'm lazy, and um, so my random number generators are quite short, just one-liners, if I can do it at all possible. So the hard bit then is the table. So I start off with a table, and it's just a JavaScript object, my table, and then I generate this. So this function here, as you can see on the screen, is everything that generates the table data. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten statements of JavaScript. Now that does everything. So the first thing I do is I iterate over the number. Okay, I, I pass the method, say um, I want to generate a table with a fixed number of rows. So I could go down here and generate a table. Where did I do that? This generates the table. Ah, here, 20. We want the 10. I can just save it there. I got a 10 table element, so it's fine. So, so my, my, my function really just generates a table, takes a table as a reference, and also then has a number of rows. And it iterates over the number of rows, and it generates a record. And all our record, original records look like this. And I'm just adding the random data. So I know the, the column header, and I know this. So it's an in-value pair. And then I calculate the number. We know we need to know how many assignments there are. So there are five columns here, but there could be 20. We don't know how many we want later on. So I have a little bit of routine that I've written here that looks and searches for um, a, a, a column that has an assignment header. So I add that grade to calculate a sum, and then I divide it by the number of columns that have assignment and the header. And then I just produced, the, I just added this value then, this average grade, plus a percentage to it and put it into the final column. And it was straightforward to do, it's not hard. I mean, I know the assignment, I ask you to do something else with this a little bit later, but this is the first, this is the first example of how we, how we might do that. Okay, so that's okay. That's how we generate the data. Generating the table, the HTML table from the object is just this piece of code here. That's it. That generates everything. So I have a table variable here, I'm assigning, assign, I'm making it null again, or the, the, an empty table, generating a new table, and it appears in here. Then I work out what the column headers are, and I generate a new table, and I add a style to that table automatically. Okay, so it's creating a table element, adding the style, and the style is in the style sheet. Okay, then I'm inserting a row at the end of the table, that's the minus one, so I'm iterating over all of the, the headers, student name, student ID, adding them, and I'm just adding that to the, appending this to the table. So that's all the headers. And then I iterate over all of the, the table and um, uh, the rest of the cells, okay? Um, and it's not too bad, you know? I um, I set, I, I know that the first two are strings, so I have to left align those, and I know the rest of them are have to be right aligned, so I iterate over the first column. J is the column, okay? And then I set the attributes to be, it's a cell with text align, or a cell with um, number line, and I've specified what that is. 
I just add it to my table. And then I just update the view container, which is up here with the contents of that string. So then just telling I'm adding the table and to there. Here it is, I'm appending it, and I'm just deleting it for the one that was there previously by just assigning it to null, appending this, and I'm done. And this is my show table object. This is how I, when I click this button here to get the current table, it's these um, four lines of code. Not too bad, really, in some respects. Um, you know, it would be about another 10 lines of code to save and add and save and store or save and reload to get the, the strings to and from a cookie. And then we could just update the table and then just iterate over the, this function again to do that. I mean, we can modify this so that instead of just using this variable internally, it takes a table as a, as a, a variable or a parameter, and then you could just update the table. So it's not too bad. So that's a little bit about how it would work. I'll upload the code and you can have a look and see how to do this yourself. Okay, thank you very much for watching.